Have you ever looked at the cross section of a piece of wood with a magnifying glass? How much detail can you really see? I'm Frank Owens from the Wood Identification Team at Mississippi State University. In this series of videos, we'll teach you how to identify North American woods the scientific way with a small magnifying glass called a hand lens. In the previous video, we taught you how to clean up the transverse surface of a wood specimen with a utility knife. In this video, we'll show you how to examine a clearly cut specimen with a hand lens so you can see all the anatomical detail that will help you differentiate one wood from another. Let's start with the hand lens itself. A hand lens, also called a jeweler's loop, is nothing more than a small finger-held magnifying glass. For wood identification, we recommend a 10x lens, which will magnify what you're looking at 10 times. That's enough magnification to see plenty of detail. Higher powered lenses like 20s and 30s are not only unnecessary, but also harder to see with. Hand lenses typically fold into a protective metal housing. To use the lens, swing it out and hold onto the housing portion like a tiny handle. The housing is big enough and your finger small enough, you can put your index finger in the hole to make it easier to hold. Now let's think about why we need a hand lens in the first place. In the previous video, we told you it was necessary to clean up the transverse surface of a wood specimen with a utility knife so you could clearly see the anatomical details that will help you differentiate it from other woods. But most of those details are very, very small, so small that they cannot be seen clearly with the naked eye. If you look at the picture of red oak on the left, you can see the growth rings and maybe also the widest rays with your naked eye, but what's going on in the late wood is really hard to tell. If you magnify the transverse surface with a hand lens, you'll see something like the image on the right. With 10 times magnification, you can see the smaller pores in the late wood clearly. If you look very closely between the widest rays, you can probably also see some very thin vertical lines, which are narrow rays. You might also be able to see faint horizontal lines of light colored tissue against the dark brown background of the late wood. Those are parenchyma, which we'll get into in a later video. The point here is that with a hand lens, you can see much more detail, much more clearly. The hand lens technique I use comes from a publication written by Dr. Alex Wiedenow from the Center for Wood Anatomy Research at the USDA Forest Service Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin. If you search the author's name and the title Identification of Central American Woods, you can find a copy online. The details of the technique can be found in Chapter 3. As most folks unfamiliar with a hand lens hold it incorrectly, let's look at the wrong way first. Hand lenses are made to be held very close to the eye, so holding your sample away from your body, bringing the hand lens to the sample, and looking from afar will not let you see the anatomical features well. Ignore what you see in the picture on the left, and instead do what you see in the image on the right. First, you want to hold the hand lens right up to your eye. Either eye will work. Notice how Dr. Wiedenhoff in the image is actually touching his cheekbone with the knuckle on his thumb. This ensures that the lens is close to the eye and then he can hold it firmly in place while he looks through it. Then, instead of bringing the lens to the specimen, bring your specimen to the lens until the transverse surface comes into focus. If you're doing it right, you should see lots and lots of anatomical detail. To ensure you can see the features clearly, be sure to let enough light shine on your specimen. Sometimes if you're not careful, you can block the light with your head or hands. In that case, don't be afraid to move your head or your lamp to a different position to let as much light in as possible. And that's how you use a hand lens. Be sure to practice until you can view your specimen clearly. By the way, now seems a pretty good time to define a new word, macroscopic. Don't worry, it's not misspelled. The A is not supposed to be an I. You're likely already familiar with the term microscopic, which means it's so small you have to look at it with a microscope. Macroscopic refers to things that you can see with your naked eye or with a low-powered hand lens like the one, we the one we learned to use today. Seems kind of weird, right? After all, we're looking at very small things. It seems odd that we would use the word macroscopic, but that's the word we use. So when we talk about macroscopic wood ID, we mean identification with a hand lens and not a microscope. For some identifications, to be absolutely sure, it's best to look at some tiny features under a microscope. But for identifying many species, a macroscopic ID with a hand lens is enough. Let's stop here for now. In our first four videos, we taught you how to use a utility knife and hand lens along with a few basics of wood anatomy. Heartwood and sapwood, early wood and late wood, and rays. 
we're almost ready to start identifying real wood specimens. So if you like what you've seen so far, please keep watching. If you're interested in learning how to identify wood the scientific way, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be rolling out new videos over the next several weeks. In the meantime, if you have a wood specimen you want scientifically identified or in-person or online training for yourself or your company, please send me an email at frank.owens at msstate.edu. This video has been brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension, taking care of what matters.